Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan, and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to break down the top tech news. We're going to show you one cool thing off the shelf in the lab and get to some of your reader questions. Let's start with the biggest news of the day, Sasha. That's Google buying DeepMind for $400 million, maybe $500 million. DeepMind is an, an artificial intelligence research company that not a lot of people know about, but everyone in the tech space has been going after in the last six months because they have extraordinary minds and very smart people working there. Google's trying to put more intelligence into its network and into its, I mean, everybody talks about big data and the big thing about big data is analyzing the big data. And so the ultimate goal is to get the computers to be able to analyze the data and produce uh, interesting, important results that humans can see. And that is what all of this computer learning, machine learning, systems, neuroscience that DeepMind does is about. Uh, Google's been working on this, these kinds of projects for years. A couple of years ago, they did a neural network trial where they uh, got a computer to successfully recognize cats. Very important for an internet very company. Important, very important. Cats are internet. important to the internet. But we're really getting the sense that, you know, Google is a data company. They're collecting all of this information and the big step for Google and the big scary thing for privacy, of course, is once they have all of this information and they have a really smart computer, how can the smart computer synthesize that information? And become smarter and more, and more human and, and actually take over some thought processes. I was at a party this weekend, somebody actually told me they like the way Google Now works more predictively than Siri and more than the Xbox One voice commands interface because it's, it's giving you information you need before you ask for it. Right, and everybody's doing this. I mean, if you saw that story last week about Amazon wanting to ship you things before you decided to buy them, you know, it's similar uh, machine neuroscience trying to have these machines think more intuitively and anticipate what you want. Also in the news, Contar, uh, the research firm, has developed, has released new mobile OS operating system information and market share worldwide. And the worldwide information is actually what's really interesting because we know what's going on in the U.S. Well, they do it country by country, which is really interesting. And, it's, and, and the, the key details here is that Windows Phone is up above 10% market share in the U.K., in France, and in Italy. Which, you know, we use Windows Phone as something of a punchline in the U.S. It's still, the, it's like a third place mm -hmm. player, better than BlackBerry, but it, way behind iOS and Android. But 10% of a market is actually a really good part of, and these are, these are large markets. Well, one of the interesting things about these Kantar World Panel numbers being, a, being an American is to see how different the U.S. market is from all these other markets. And it's because, of course, the other markets are primarily unsubsidized. And people are, especially in places like Italy, paying real prices, full prices for these phones. So things like the Nokia 520, which offers a uh, really high quality smartphone experience at a low upfront price, are booming in places like Italy, whereas the iPhone, which has no low-cost entry, has a much lower market share in some of these countries. There's a lot more iPhones in the U.S. because almost everything is subsidized here, and these low-cost Windows phones are just going crazy in some of these unsubsidized or less subsidized European countries. Yeah, and it, also the China numbers are very interesting. To see the Chinese manufacturers surpass Apple and Samsung in China because they are offering cheaper devices that are more competitive and more familiar to the people now, in the market. Now, I gotta say, so Windows Phone is over 10% in some of these countries. Uh, iOS has gone down by, you know, 5% in the US, 5% in some EU countries. But of course, the dominant operating system worldwide is absolutely Android. And it's amazing how dominant it is. It's over 80% in Spain. It's over 80% in Brazil and Argentina. I mean, this is, you know, th this, this is an Android smartphone world that we live in right now. Indeed it is. Also in the news this weekend, we covered this on PC Mag, a Nintendo cartridge from 1991 is on eBay and selling for $99,000, well, That's that, that, was the, that was the bid. Everybody covered it, we covered it. That was, you know, it was, it was the winning bid. Evidently, that might not be what the price actually winds up being. Yeah, so this guy put up this cartridge for something called Nintendo World Championship, which is this cult object among video gamers. Uh, only 90 of these cartridges were made in 1991. Uh, it's, this, uh, it's, it's this contest game where you play Super Mario Brothers, Rad Racer, and Tetris for a little over six minutes, and the person with the highest score wins. And it's really just about the collectability of it all. It's about how few of these cartridges were made, how important the NES was in gaming history, etc., etc. So this guy puts this cartridge up, 
it gets bid up to $99,000. And then later the guy emails the video game website Destructoid and says, oh, the high bidder backed out. Shocking. And there's another... There's probably a 12-year-old kid. Well, there's another, there's another site that said that, uh, unproven, that the high bidder claimed that his two-year-old accidentally made the bid. Mm, that does happen. But what I think is really going on here is, of course, you look on eBay, and now a bunch of other people who have these cartridges have decided to list them, and they're between ten dollars and $30,000. So perhaps the guy who was bidding $90,000 saw these other listings and said, hey, wait a minute, maybe that's not really the market price of yeah. this thing. I love a market, any market for any good that is, ranges between ten dollars and $30,000. I just think that that's a, that's a great business to be in. Um, we'll be following this story in, uh, no doubt, over the, over the course of the next couple of days on PCMag.com. Now let's get to a reader question. Uh, you can send us your reader questions via email. Email. You can put them on, f on Facebook, on Twitter. Put them in the comment section of the videos that we're recording and posting put on YouTube. Right there, right, put them right, right down there. Put them right down there. there. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we get this question from Donna via email. She wants to know if Republic Wireless plans offer any phones other than the $299 Moto X. Okay, this is really interesting. Republic Wireless is this super duper cheap wireless carrier that uh, offers these $5 to $25 a month plans provided that you make a lot of your calls and use a lot of your data on Wi-Fi. It has this special Wi-Fi calling software. Now, when you're out of Wi-Fi, it uses the Sprint 3G network. So it has a nationwide uh, network, but really they want you to do as much in Wi-Fi as possible. Right now they only offer one phone, and it's the Moto X, which is not the cheapest phone, although it is one of the best Android Man, phones out there. It's a great there. phone. If you're going to pick one, that would be a, not a bad one to pick. Yeah, and it's, it's relatively affordable uh, for a full price phone, and these plans are really, really cheap, so if the uh, Wi-Fi plus Sprint equation works for you, I still think it's a really, big it's a really good deal. That said, um, Republic Wireless isn't confirming any new phones right now, but I'm pretty confident that they will soon start offering the Moto G which is Motorola's low-cost phone. It's a 3G-only phone. They're likely to offer it for $179, so it would be a lower-cost option. Unfortunately, I don't have a time frame on that. Yeah, and that's uh, how long would you tell her to wait? Um, I would say if you don't see it crop up in the next month or so, uh, then you know just, just pull the trigger on that Moto X. It's a really You're nice phone. phone. Yeah, that's my phone. Yeah. Uh, so that's our question. Hopefully that was helpful, Donna. Let's move on to one cool thing. I'm very excited about this one cool thing. We test thousands of products in the lab here in New York can every I, day. Can I? Now? You can, now? you can. Today that cool thing is the Pebble Steel. This was uh, not necessarily announced at, at CES, but shown off at CES. It wasn't on the show floor, but there were plenty of units around there. This is our first time uh, actually getting it into the lab and playing with it. And it's basically a Pebble watch, a Pebble smartwatch, which is our favorite Editor's Choice winning smartwatch because of its elegance, because of its simplicity, but it looks like a high-end watch that you wouldn't mind wearing with a suit. It just looks better than the other more sporty watches that are out there. And um, so far, we're testing it right now. We literally just got it into the lab. But it's a but it's a great watch. It's got, a, it's got a nice band. It comes with two different versions of the band, a steel band and a leather band. I like the leather band. And it's great for you know, providing notifications. It pairs with your smartphone. It'll tell you when you get text messages. You can't talk to it and make phone calls with it, but it's um, great for notifications. And I think that's the winning, that's the winning feature for smartphones. The smart two watches. things I really like about the Pebble are uh, the long battery life. It has relatively long battery life for a smartwatch, and I say this after having tried to wear a Sony smartwatch and having it last 14 hours. Uh, the Pebble lasts a couple of days, that's great. Uh, but also it has this really rich, active third-party developer community behind it, so that while it is a very limited device, it is basically a screen for apps running on your smartphone, there are enough apps, which Pebble calls watch faces, to keep you busy. And so it's, you know, we are very, very early in the world of smartwatches. We are at, you know, version 0.01. These things are the Altair 8800 of smartwatches. But uh, right now, I think simple is best. Yeah, and so $250, it's gonna go on sale tomorrow. We will have a review on PCMag.com tomorrow as well. You'll find out exactly how it stacks up to previous versions, to other watches on the market. But so far, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, we're very interested to see how that turns out. We have to go give it back to an analyst now to finish testing it. That has been PC Mag Live for today. Tune in tomorrow, we'll have a brand new show for you. And remember to leave us comments in the comments section. We will answer your questions on air. Thanks for joining us.